Suresh is going to start our uh, IT for IT themed presentations this morning. So please give him a warm open group welcome. It's really great to be here uh, back in uh, Hyderabad. And thanks, Steve, for the kind introduction. Um, so before we start, um, I think just to get things rolled up, how many of you have heard IT for IT before you came to this event? OK, that makes my job a lot more easier, right? So um, I think with this to the context today, the whole day is going to be about IT for IT. So I'm going to set the context in terms of what's the business value that IT can bring in, right? And it's going to be more setting the context and coming up with a storyboard, right? And how many of you like stories? I think one of the easiest way to remember things in our life is through the granny stories. I'm a staunch believer that when you start to have a storyboard, you are able to absorb things lucidly and able to implement that, right? So that's my humble attempt to get through a storyboard. So why are we here today attending a conference of this magnitude, right? Two days of conference and we are on the second day to start up and I hope uh, Steve has actually given you the kind of momentum build up for this, for day two. As IT, a lot of people, how many of you are from IT here? Almost 95%. How many of you are from business? Good. So three people, gentlemen. I have a voice for you here. So from a, from a order of the day, we are into a section where we need to reduce cost, improve quality, and also manage risk. Do you think that we have, uh, this is consistent across all different segments? So just deep diving into it is context relation on what is the situation today is it's, it's not that familiar but we have the IT pressure the IT is bombarded with projects to be delivered on time with tight kind of precision with quality and value business has got a lot of pressures talking about reducing the cost going fast time to market making sure that we have loyal customers one of the biggest challenges is that we are we are having customers evade every day because there's so much of options so what can we do in order to retain our customers and deliver value? Um, of course, we, we have our own saying in terms of economy. We are um, hi-fi in telling about our GDP and growth and stuff like that. But then why do you think IT is feeling the pressure? The important question in terms of pressure is to look at we are more towards technology focused. Steve mentioned about being our own devices, you know, the cloud virtualization, internet of things and so on. Right? Building smart cities, probably Anvesh can add on to that, is we have so much technology focus today. Right? And we act, continue to act on silos. And we are so much process focused. I mean, if you ask a consultant like me, I would probably go out and say that probably get ITIL or COVID and that will work. The problem that we have with all of those so-called process-centric approaches, we don't define the end-to-end -end value chain. And many of the times when you talk with the enterprise, they say, oh, guys, these guys talk about Agile, Lean, ITIL, and COVID, and that doesn't make sense for us. Because there was so, no common understanding from an end-to-end -end perspective that how IT is delivering business value. Uh, no. Can someone, just to see if you're alert, can someone read this slide? Just loud enough. If you could just give a probably a, a mic. Yeah, thanks for volunteering. You can just read loud. Here is Edward Beer coming downstairs now, bump, bump, bump on the back of his head behind Christopher Robin. It is as far as he knows the only way of coming downstairs. Sometimes he feels that there really is another way. If only he could stop bumping for a moment and think of it. Hey, my. Just think for a while. In IT, we have been doing things traditionally very well in terms of operational excellence. We, th we always say that we did well yesterday. We'll continue to do well today. And we'll also continue to do this, well tomorrow. This. I was just talking to Sukumar just a while back. How much things have transformed in the last 10 years? Right? The level of magnitude that we are talking about business agility is just every second. If that was the case, can we rest on our past laurels of how we did better last year 
versus this year. So just think about, there is a need for reflection of what we are doing today, does it add real business value? So there is no longer a imperative, but this, there is a real imperative that IT has to move towards creating value, right? So you look at this one from a perspective that traditional IT was focusing on workloads, infrastructure, managing data and other stuff, we are moving into rapid virtualization, cloud, mobility, internet of things, bring your own devices. So if we need to really go up, and business says that we mean to go about it, and, I, and I've just read recently about shared IT is good because it keeps the IT on the toes, right? Because remember, business and IT are like a marriage. There's only one person who can outsource the other person. Who is it? Business can outsource IT. IT cannot outsource business. So we are at the mercy of doing something that adds value to business. Otherwise, we get outsourced, right? Now, we are going to talk in detail about IT value chain, but that's not my scope of my presentation. There are a lot of eminent panelists who could go to the level of detail, but the value chain is talking about an end-to-end -end perspective. I would strongly recommend books of Porter for value chains as well as Martin to get more understanding of how value streams and value chains work. The IT value chain broadly is divided into four streams, okay? So it starts with strategy to portfolio, where we are trying from the strategy level, what kind of business are we going to be in? What are the kind of portfolios that we offer as part of service to our customers? And then bring about business innovation. So you start at the strategy level, which strategy to portfolio, which is a set of your own service portfolio, if you remember. and then come to the requirements to deploy, which is primarily into service design aspect, right? So looking at right from the where we design a blueprint until it actually gets to the kind of architectural standard, principles, everything, models in order to get things done, and then we go to request to fulfill. Request to fulfill is primarily the catalog where we have someone subscribe for a service. And today everything is actually working upon that model of how do we purchase and get those services. And finally, last but not the least, the real value comes in in terms of operations, right? People who are working, how many of you have been or have been part of support, IT support? How difficult is that particular job? It's the most thankless job that I've ever seen in my life. Agree? People think that they're machines to churn out in terms of tickets and other stuff. The, the, the important aspect is, those are the times where we actually realize value. How many of the times you have had a customer telling, you fix this issue, great, and you send me a survey, I submitted good things about it, and tomorrow, again the same issue reoccurs. He gets frustrated because you're just fixing bug and it reoccurs. So when we're talking about detect to correct, we need to be proactive, you know, in terms of even management, looking at monitoring and performances before someone actually starts calling us up, right? The most difficult thing is, you know, just keep on asking people for the same issue again and again. You're not adding value. So keeping the lights on is not adding value. It's about proactively identifying bottlenecks and then fixing that so that the customer is happy. I've had discussions with CIOs and asking one question, what is the most important thing that keeps you awake on the night? Any, any guesses for a CIO? Which is the most important thing that keeps in his brain? Which has got sleepless nights? What is that? Cost. Sorry? Cost. IT cost. IT cost is okay when someone is wearing the cost, so he can still run the show. True. Sorry? Unplanned downtimes. How many times you have got to a major escalation where someone is calling up and say, what's happening around? So unplanned downtime is again to talk with detect to correct. Just a web part of think about. When I, when I was just talking about with James that, you know, when we talked about IT for IT, it's very, very important to understand how it moves from a conceptual service model, right? We have everything on the, on the kind of a blank paper saying that this is what is our own strategy and portfolio, but how does it try to cascade into the next level, which is a kind of a logical model that we get into for the rest of the two streams. And finally, how does it come to the service model, right? So we have people who would go into greater detail. I'm not going to do that, but this is just to give you a, a, 
a failure of that particular game. Now let's come to a case study. Right? So we're giving, setting the context of why we are here in terms of IT, in terms of demand for business, what are we doing? So this customer I was engaged with uh, for the last 10 to 11 months is actually a telecom provider in Southeast Asia. I think I wanted to keep it that level because you, I don't want you to guess much more than that. Yeah. So it's a small mid-size segment. So one of the questions that people ask is, can I use this particular thing for a smaller organization as opposed to big, large enterprises? So this company, uh, telecom provider, was very good in operational excellence. That means they were very good in detect to correct, right? So they were doing properly operational efficiency and all that stuff. However, they needed improvement across the value chain. That means across the enterprise, they wanted someone who could talk the same language and make things as a value stream. So they didn't know whether it was a framework or an architecture or a methodology that they need to adopt. They said, is there something that we can all talk the same language? Because someone is talking about lean. Um, Steve is talking about Agile, Sukumar is talking about DevOps, someone and something. I mean, can I have something which is common across? Okay. Now, what was the selling point for IT of IT? So someone called me and I'm, I didn't know, Steve, you had this slide already in your uh, presentation. But then someone called us from the organization said that we had heard about Gartner saying a lot of good things about IT for IT. Do you think you can do it? Oh. Is that so? Let's go in and then do it. Because what happens is most of these trends come into practice when Gartner or Forrester just voices it out big time, right? So that was one of the selling points where this organization wanted to try IT for IT, right? They didn't have much of clue. They called a consultant to come there and start doing a cross. So from an organizational driver perspective, the first is to understand the common understanding of can we talk the same language across HR, finance, vendor, procurement, and all of those stuff, along with IT, right? Because IT is always looked as the pampered child. Because it gets a lot more attention these days, as opposed to the other business functions. Think about manufacturing for that matter. Manufacturing has been there for years. Finance has been for years. We have been actually expert of that. So end-to-end -end value chain, right from the way how the procurement works, how resourcing works, how governance works, how HR actually does the recruitment part of it, giving resources across the end-to-end -end value chain. Holistic view of, sorry, holistic view of business, because business wants to have a single 360 degree view of how things were operating at. Leveraging best practice across, which means that people had their own things about having, oh, okay, I think this is best word by lean operations. But someone saying, no, no, you know what, you'll have to move from the traditional waterfall to the agile methodology. That's more prevalent. So people have their own ways to actually come and, and vouch for their own best practices. So can we have a common understanding of leverage the best practice? Kind of hybrid. But finally, learn, equip, and excel. That means we are ready to learn on the best practices, see how it fits into the context of the organization, and start excelling. So what we did was look at the client org structure this is how it looked like. We had a corporate office, uh, um, procurement department, which is centralized, where they were actually providing all of the services. And then they had IT, HR, finance, and vendor management. Now, one of the things we, we are very, very clear is to look at the scope of where were you going to touch people and to what degree, right? So, obviously, we had to get them into a same page. So, we did this IT for IT, thanks to Charles. Who, who actually actually started off with that. So we started off with the value stream. We did an overview and said why it matters. Did a deep dive across to get people across. Defined business KPIs, high levels and, and so on, right? But the essence was not to just consume everything. Just to give them the context and see where and what to apply for. So how did we go about doing it? Was when we actually went about talking to business, talking to different departments, one of the things we were very candid and were very um, focused is not to just blow things out of proportion. So we wanted to focus on the asset state of what it was, look at the IT for IT, both the value stream and the supporting services, and see how does it make sense to that. Because many a times a consultant comes there and delivers something which he thinks is more powerful as opposed to understanding what is the key issue that we are trying to address. 
So we wanted to deliver something practical, continual service improvement and value delivery. So this is was the first thousand foot level of how did we approach. So what did we do is this is the case of use case form. So when we actually went across looking at different departments, the first one was procurement. One of the challenges that procurement had was increase in the time for releasing POs. So what happens? The time that actually it spends time to release a purchase order means that the vendor is not going to get its payment on time. And there's a, an increasing cycle that goes across. The second thing that we had from a vendor finance department was payment to vendors was not done on time. Guess what? If you don't pay your money, and I'm, I'm a vendor sometimes, you know, if you don't get paid on time, do you think you will continue business with them? No way. W guess what? Your, your prime supplier is going to go away from the value chain. So all your strategic and tactical suppliers that you envision are not going to be happy because you are not taking care of them. That's the business impact. The HR had a big challenge because they said, okay, we want two virtualized, you know, you know cloud engineers, we want to do the virtualization, so get them on board. So the hiring time was pretty much a long that by the time the business asked, there's nobody in the cycle to deliver. So what is happening is the lead time of hiring actually impacts the whole business, business proposition. Then we had about vendors, which is a multiple vendors, which is called service supplier integration, right? Service integration and management. And finally, IT. IT comes up with some projects which business does not understand what's the value of it. So what we did was we tried to work with an IT for IT value stream mapping. Pulled out something which was very relevant to that particular context and then see how this was working. So first what happened was, let's take of the procurement. So we first understood the business process. So the business process was, you have a vendor selection. So vendor selection basically, you know, you call it for invites in terms of, you know, uh, bids and other stuff and look at the, these are my prime vendors. And then there is a requirements and compliance in terms of have they paid their taxes, uh, do they have their, any liability before, how have been their delivery rates and all of those stuff, and then approvals, which means the business approval dying that. And obviously it has a ERP system or SAP system where your service provider is actually listed in the system. So when you are listed into the system, one of the things that we need to have is making sure that that particular purchase order gets released on time for the scope of service. So what happened was, in this whole business process, we did a kind of an assessment. The number of POs that was supposed to be generated on a queue, when it actually reached 100, it actually, it, it actually dropped. So what happens is if you have the numbers 1 to 100, it stops there, and then the next number was somewhere like 102 or something. So it was not able to calibrate from where it stopped to start spooling in the rest of the POs. Guess what? You lost a PO in the between. So you'll have to search across from all different dimensions to find out that one PO that was missed in the whole cycle. Are you able to understand the context of this impact? Then suddenly there is a downtime of systems which we do not know is there's no methodology to get it into the lift. I've seen a lot of apartments today here. When we have stuck in somewhere in the lift, it has to go to the nearest you know, ground. But let's like, say if it's uh, at second, it has to go there. Many a times get stand still. What am I supposed to do? Should I go down? Should I go up? So there has to be bare minimum amount of backup and level of restoration for us to start with. We tell a lot, but then this is the whole business impact. So there was no reset of counter. So what we did was look at the KPIs from IT for IT and looked at for the context, which is in grid. So we looked at how much were the POs that were delivered per period, per service, you know, to the customer that we had anticipated. We looked at how much was the inflow, how much did we deliver it on time. What we also measured was percentage of POs delivered on time with automation. That means we had to talk with Detect to Correct because there was a drop in the downtime. So we'll have to adjust that particular thing to understand how much of impact of variance it created in order to deliver things on time. So we used and we also understand that how many vendors were deployed on time in terms of POs, in terms of timely delivery, all of those stuff. So it's an end-to-end value chain right from the beginning of raising a bid to completion of a PO. The second thing was most interesting was the recruitment life cycle. So many of the people have gone through a lot of this HR life cycle. Run. So it started off identifying, understanding the requirements of people, looking at 
uh, sourcing, be it insourcing, outsourcing, you know, looking at people from outside or talent acquisition, screening applicants, doing an initial interview and then doing a final interview, get a feedback, and then do a short listing and verification. Verification is basically the security clearance. Does he have a criminal record, right? I don't want to have someone who has actually committed a, in a crime to be a part of my company, right? So you do all of those stuff. The point is I'm not able to see anything here. So I didn't have a duplication of it here. So, um, so what happens is the security and then you roll out an offer and you join things. What happened? Guess what? The security clearance took about two weeks. That means after someone is shortlisted, when you do an investigation through a security clearance, it took two weeks for them to roll out an offer. So that means the two weeks of lead time had to be factored in for the overall delivery, right? So guess what? Can I use another vendor who could shorten the time of my security clearance? The other one was, can I re-choose or change the cycle from this verification somewhere else? So guess what we did? So we did everything. The change was, did a business forecast. We asked the business guys, you need to give us the pipeline and forecast way ahead. Just don't come in and ask, we need cloud engineers, we need virtualized engineers. You tell me what's your strategy. Look at what's the kind of task force you're going to ramp up in the next 12 months time. Because you have to decide the strategy level that has to percolate it from the strategy to portfolio to the level of request, request to fulfillment. Right? So there was a real need of buying in and asking business, you have to be proactive as well. But what we did was we combined this verification as part of joining formalities. They said, guys, let's leave them for a one month period. So you just get things up and running without losing the two weeks of lead time. But then what happens is on the run, you can actually do it parallel. So these were some of the stuff which we thought could make sure that the value in that in order to deliver resources on time was quick enough. So what we did was a couple of things might be was how was the requirement from the business and departments? Many times what happens is there is no centralized way of collating all the requirements. Business department says, hey, I think we need to have virtualization engineer. We need to have a project manager deployed. So we need to have a centralized system in which all the requirements of your talent has to come through a full pool and then it gets actioned as part of the queue. Right? So we also looked at percentage of successful resource. Many times, how many times you have seen a resource being hired which is not really fitting into the bill. Either you have not done the proper uh, screening or the job description and probably that is where the skills assessment, the skills for information age, see I could help in doing a proper assessment. Many, many companies do not have that. They want to have a standard job description which is a copy and paste of things to do that and then they roll it out. And they expect everything to be on time. So we also looked at the quality of people who are onboarded after they are, you know, they are provisioned as resources. And finally, was on time. You can have a resource who could take sweet three months time to get on, get ready for projects. But is the business willing to invest three months of time to get and build on a project? Would you agree if someone is waiting for three months to get it built? Would you think you should hire him or not hire? If you're a business, there's there's no question, right? I mean, how on the earth shall I pay him three months of salary without even being job? So if that was the case when you thought about HR then you should look at it into a different value stream, right? Many times we look at things as part of what it is relevant to us, not what is relevant to the business. Finance. Finance obviously had to bring because POs were not released on time. They said we cannot make a payment because POs are not ready. You see, there is, there is an integration aspect we are talking about. There is already something which is, which is broken because of which there is an impact of it. I'm still waiting for a PO to be released where I have already done the training and consulting about eight weeks back. Now I have to wait for the PO to be released before I go and submit a request. Backlog of payments, compliance check. People do a lot of compliance check when it comes to finance, right? The question is, why would finance need to do it? Why don't someone else do it so that it actually makes sure that it is faster to get on delivery? So and again, there's local finance and external finance. That means they say they've also processed it for their own employees in terms of paychecks, in terms of um, uh, employee engagements and cash payouts, but also take care of that. Can you have someone dedicated to look at the business side of things so that it is much more faster? If someone told you that 30th of the month or 29th of this month, uh, the payroll uh, application is not working, so you'll get your payment 
by first week of March. How does it sound? Very relevant, right? There was a problem, there was a bug. Sorry, we couldn't make it. Will you accept to be there? About five days after that, who will pay the EMI then? Mortgage there, right? So it's very important to understand who are your consumers. Is it your local employees, your external, how are they getting impacted? Now, I am a staunch believer that you need to look at from a business versus IT. Now, you look at the service provider stack here. And this is from BRMI, Business Relationship Management Institute. I've just taken a role as regional lead for. But the whole point is you first start as a service provider at an ad hoc level. Look at a grocery market that you go in. It doesn't matter where you go with, with any grocery, right? It doesn't matter because the, that the value is very less. It's a commodity. So you go ad hoc way to buy um, a wheat or sugar or something like that. Then what you happen is you saying order taker. I normally say order taker is an analogy is a husband and wife. Husband always takes the order. So, in terms of order taken, that means you are doing what is asked to be done. You don't ask questions. So, if you are a service provider asking, can I know what is the big picture? You don't need to know. Have you seen this discussion? They said, you don't need to know. Just do what I ask you to do. That's what you are as an order taker. Then you start going to a service provider, which we have said, SLAs and other stuff. Watermelon syndrome. Okay. How is the watermelon looking outside? Lush green. So, your SLAs are always green. But if you open it up, it's bleeding red. The customer is bleeding because you think that service level agreements was the only thing that was a parameter to measure my contracts. But this guy is crying. Do you understand? Because every time I, I call up help desk, it goes through an interactive voice response. Have you had this experience? I want someone to hear me out. Don't give me through this interactive voice response again and again. I mean, automation can become a bane if you really don't connect at that level of human. So it's very important to understand how do we move from service provider to a trusted advisor and then strategic partner. And we have had engagements where we are talking about not charging any money to the customer, but based on what is the operational efficiency or effectiveness, we get charged on percentage. So that means we share risk and rewards. So that's how you need to start working with your suppliers. That's a different ballgame altogether. So with multi-sourcing environment, multi-suppliers, this is how you probably want to Think about it. And these guys are the most pampered guys. IT has been coming across and saying that we are good. I don't think we, we need anything to improve upon. I think we are, we are pretty good on what we are doing. right? So this guy says, no, we will adopt DevOps. We will adopt Agile and other stuff. So what we said was, guys, can you hold on for a while? We don't want you to talk about anything. Let's play a game. So what we did was, we wanted IT to understand business. So the way we did was we did a game called grab a pizza. And that's following up here. The grab a pizza is a game which is talking about how an organization wants to make a $3 million budget, $3 million revenue in three to four months and how IT can come up with strategic projects, tactical projects and operation projects to reach the number. Many times what happens is in IT, we say that we are we want better software, we want zero downtime, we want to invest on new technology. The question is, how does it relate to my dollars? How is it relating to my bottom line? How is it relating to my top line? So what we did was we had role plays, about 14 people. So we had CEO, business manager, supplier, right? We wanted to have someone supplier who would provide the provisioning across. IT management, so you have a service desk, you have a release manager and all of those stuff. and your business manager, which means director of finance, director of marketing, all of those people sitting across. So that's a game. And then what we do is we allocate people. One of the team is looking at app development. So releasing new patches, releasing new versions of the product, that's a part of the app development team. Change management, make sure that, okay, this is my window of release. So I will have my patches updated. This is my normal change. This is my emergency change. All of those stuff. But then you, you also have to understand the change only has a particular window to release all of those stuff. How do you prioritize? The question is people don't ask the business. They think they know it better. They don't want to disturb the business. The business thinks, I don't know what IT is doing. So all of those people are making a part and this is how it actually goes. They process the calls that comes in. They analyze the business calls. They analyze performance. How is the capacity of infrastructure? What is being done? So it's a typical 
job of how you're doing operations and how do you improve the level of service delivery. We also need to plan change because there are companies who ask for technology optimization. Bring your own devices. Go to cloud. Go to virtualization. Internet of things. How do you do that? What kind of changes you need to make there? What time window do you have it? So all of those stuff is actually brought across for, for various purposes. And what happens is, finally get the financial report. So if I want to make three months to six months, if I want to make a million dollar budget or one billion, how do I get every month? So the IT has to come back with telling how are we going to achieve that. So this is how the games look like. But essentially what happens is people understand just addressing IT will not make business happy. So that was the, one of the key messages we want to drive across and tell guys you only have definitive time of resources. Within that particular period, you need to deliver things and make sure it actually is profitable to business. Because if it's not profitable, I can outsource you, so you are in the mercy of me, right? So that's how we bring those aspects to understand how the critical dimensions fit each other. These were the graphs. How was the revenue cost month over month? What's the revenue cost? What is the infrastructure cost? How much did I lose revenue? How many times you have had incident tickets without knowing what's the cost of the incident? We are talking about measuring ticket resolutions. We are talking about detect to correct. But from detect to correct, do you know if I lose an incident or if I don't deliver an incident on time, what's the financial impact? Many times you don't ask this question at all. We have measured a number of tickets to be resolved, which is a very wrong metric about how do we do that. So we actually trigger those conversations for them to understand how IT need to be an enabler of business and an integral part of business. So what did we get of the results? We got people more focused on scope of work and deliverables. So people think, okay, this is my job. That's not my job. So complete absence of end-to-end -end value chain. People didn't know what HR was doing, how vendor was doing, how procurement was doing. So we were able to connect the dots in terms of how these people work together in order to make the customer happy. IT to come up with strategic, tactical, and operation initiatives, right? So what we did was asking them us to come up with strategic projects, tactical projects, and operation projects within the client organization and say, how, is, how much is the cost of capital expenses versus operational expenses? We also looked at business forecast, pipeline, market trends, because if I want to be a market leader as a telecom company, what does it take to be to that level? So we are able to understand from a strategy to portfolio level to articulate it and say, how do we get it in, in reality? So it comes up with business case, all of those stuff. And from a usage perspective, we need to look at not customers alone, your users, your business, all stakeholders. So we are able to really bring our to that value of how strategy to portfolio will help to address how IT needs to be aligned with business. Probably it gives you a sense of what it is, I'm not going to further do it. What are the challenges? What do you think is the most challenge when you bring in IT for IT? If you have done before. Anybody? Because I wanted to also get your opinion. What are the common challenges that you have getting someone into IT for IT? Change management, which is organization change management. How many times we say that you follow the new process, follow the new rules, everything will be okay. It will be a state of utopia. People don't understand what is in for me. What's going to change from the way that I'm doing today to what is going to be changing tomorrow. And we had this instance where you have in a, an environment of traditional infrastructure. And people have to be moving into a cloud offering. The first question is, will I have my job? What will I need to be skilled in order to be on the job? So those aspects is the big cheetah that we need to address across. Right? It's important to think. Just have a look at this. The ops perception of dev is this bunch of guys having a gala time, listening to music and actually coding. Okay? So that's, that's the perception of dev. What's, what's dev's perception of ops? These are a bunch of jolly guys. They go there, have fun time all over the place and this is how people perceive things. Just between development and operations, if you are having this kind of a mental attitude, think about what people perceive as HR, what people think about procurement, people think about vendor management. Guess what? We always think we are the best, right? We always think the other person doesn't know anything. We don't open the mouth. So it's important that the perception reality has to be checked through organization change management. Everybody has to be in a stake in the game. 
So we have to internalize, we have to communicate, make sure that we talk the same language, and which is very relevant. So when we brought about this IT for IT, one of the things that people loved about it is because they were able to relate to how their current scope of work is adding value to the overall business. So what are the lessons learned? And it's always a tussle, right? I mean, if you move on from this, it took about 10 to 11 months for us to get to some of the decent level of shape. Some of the lessons learned is do not just open up everything and say we will embrace everything. So we wanted to look at point solutions, as look at what are we trying to address and where can we establish quick wins and what's the kind of roadmap that we do. So we needed a kind of a phased approach to look at where we are today, what do you want to go next and what does it take. So we were actually going through that particular journey in order to get people into it. Some of the hard lessons we learned is subscribed in the next one is what are the mistakes people do in organization change? People are often, often neglected. It's all about process, it's about tools. People is the last people who can come in. So guess what? People are not going to cope up with the change. There are a lot of naysayers because they don't understand how the new model of operation is going to impact the way I do business. And people have a lot of expectations. People have you know, an emotional trauma. They, 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 they don't have an option to voice out their opinion because management says we will follow this approach. Guess what? People say that, oh, I think I will, my days are numbered. I don't know whether my job is still relevant. And people think about doing new things with the existing ones. It's like people say, whatever we did today, we will continue to do tomorrow, but we will get different results. That's how people are approaching the kind of same thing. And people say that change management has to come from top to bottom. All of this read quarters rule of, you know, change management. You know, it, it just, it doesn't come from top to bottom. It has to percolate and has to come change agents across the organization, be it awareness, be it workshops, being understanding how things will change in order for people to get more buy-in across. And then just don't push things. People ask people what works, what doesn't work and tailor it to it. And many times, I think the last one is what? You need to celebrate success. I think many times we are running across like a wild horse. Where we to stop, celebrate those quick wins, a laughter meal and, and stuff like that. And then say, we accomplished together. The kind of oneness and bonding is very important to take it forward on that. So what do you have for IT for IT? IT for IT has got a great level of resource in the open group. So there are a lot of white papers, there are a lot of practical case studies. So one of them is Shell. If you go and read their stuff, that's amazing because they have really used to the level of context where they see IT as a strategic partner to business. So there are a lot of resources. I'm glad when I looked at the, the goodie bag, there were the pocket guides, which was easy for me to refer. I think looking at those pocket guides gives you an instant um, reference to what we need to focus upon. Finally, if I want to leave with something as next steps, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. So it doesn't matter where you are in your journey of IT transformation or business transformation. It's, the, it's every single step that you take towards that direction for going to that outcome is what will make you go ahead. Of. Any questions? Thank you for the presentation. Uh, one doubt I have is we have had this conversation about creating value for business and we had a lot of internal and external workshops. But one of the areas where we have found the motivation to be lacking is where, okay, so I create value for business, but the business may not be understanding the impact and I still get what I get currently. So what's in it for me? I know I'm doing something for the business. So how do you address that? I think it's a very valid question. So one of the things that we always think is, can IT and business sit on the same table and tell them, what do you expect from business? So I think it's like a marriage partner. The business has to tell IT what they expect as IT to do. And IT should be able to relate to certain initiatives or projects or portfolios and say how their aspect is addressing those visions. So normally we use a balance scorecard. If you know what's a balance scorecard, so Kaplan and Norton has a balanced scorecard, which is into four quadrants. 
so the business will go at level of customer finance operational uh, operational efficiency and personal innovation and then you build on that task from business goals to IT goals from IT goals to IT activities and then KPIs so that way what business starts with you are able to understand how it translates to activities and processes so COVID actually gives you a kind of a structure which is actually very useful instrument to go there and talk about it many times what happens is when you when you bring those level of detail you are not talking back to the business and saying this is what we are going to give it are you okay with that because we come at the end of the journey and then say this is what we have probably engaging the business earlier and telling this is what we anticipate to address your business goal does it make sense gives us a lot more opportunity to talk the same language I think that has worked for me many times hope that answers you I have a question here most of the organizations the IT is not directly built it is a proportionate costing and it's a shared service correct so investing in the IT for IT may not be a viable solution and they say it is a because it's a shared service and one of the part of the billing goes to them correct and they are on the pity of the other um, which are directly built so how do you from get them convinced that please put money for the IT for IT I think it's a very 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 important question one of the things is people think that you know it's for local IT why do I need to have another additional budget for it but the, the point is coming back again is happy people make ha happy customers now if you aren't to deliver value to something externally you need to have the internal ecosystem actually charged up right so what we have seen is we have shown results where if you don't have a motivated task force as to addressing what your things they're not going to be happy people who are going to deliver happy things many big companies in this world have not been brought just because of having superheroes they have people ordinary people who do things extraordinary well how do you think that is being it's because the leadership sits along with them to make that journey so if you don't make that kind of investment for your own people to get that one guess what people are going to lean right it doesn't matter about whether it's internal or external the the service as a definition of a, is to deliver value and outcomes without the associated cost and risk it doesn't matter whether you're internal or external so if you're able to understand the definition of a quality of a service then this question must not be arising back for the business I think you should put forward the same question to business and say what do you mean by service service is nothing to do with internal or external the definition remains the same right so that's how you need to probably take that discussion forward.